Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. And today, we're happy to once again be joined by Boyan Ivanov, the CEO of Storepool. Welcome back. Again. I guess before we jump into it, maybe uh, if you could just give viewers a quick overview of the company. Sure. Um, we're a storage software company that does box, box storage in particular. It's a software platform that runs on uh, standard hardware and makes that hardware behave like a big uh, storage system. Uh, on standard servers, the company is running in more than 30 countries across the globe and on four continents. Um, we're running the company for about 12 years now, since 2012-ish, uh, the beginning of 2012, actually, uh, with hundreds of mission-critical deployments for high-performance box storage. Um, so, yeah, we're a profitable and growing company, uh, so, uh, a, you know, a, a good partner. Now, thinking about where we are in, in 2023, can you describe some of the problems that you see with many of uh, of the data protection approaches that are being deployed today? Yeah. So uh, in terms of data uh, protection for primary storage systems, people are still mostly using uh, rate uh, 10 or 50 uh, for uh, reducing the data footprint. That's for high performance. For some use cases, they're also using uh, erasure, um, not erasure coding, uh, but uh, the dupe and compression, but these require a uh, considerable amount of CPU and RAM to run well, and also still uh, pose a performance impact in terms of latency. Uh, er erasure coding is something that's uh, picking up, uh, but it's still used mostly for secondary workloads because of the performance impact. Uh, and of course, um, the golden standard for a distributed system uh, is triple replication, which is uh, you know still having a considerable uh, impact on the uh, media required to run the systems, though it doesn't affect performance. It's the fastest, but then comes as a trade-off. So these are typically the things that companies would use. Uh, maybe you could go into a little bit more detail and, and describe to the audience, you know, what is erasure coding and maybe talk about how it differs from other approaches that you mentioned, like RAID. Yeah, sometimes they overlap a bit, but uh, general, generally speaking, erasure coding would be something that would be a newer way of doing uh, data uh, reduction uh, that would usually spread multiple appliances, whereas RAID systems would be in one physical appliance. And if you lose the appliance, then you don't have access to the data anymore. Uh, whereas erasure coding would be spread across multiple appliances. Also erasure coding is more granular. For example, in best in class erasure coded systems, you would only rebuild data. And with RAID, you would rebuild an entire drive. Let's say you have a, a you know an eight terabyte NVMe, that only has, let's say, one gigabyte of data stored. If you lose the, the drive with RAID technologies, you would rebuild the entire drive. With erasure coding, you know, you would only rebuild the data that was lost. Uh, so there are, you know, you can think of erasure coding as much more sophisticated way to uh, base data that's uh, faster, uh, more reliable, and also doesn't impose a lot of the limitations that uh, RAID would impose. And there are a number of limitations uh, RAID would impose. And what are the performance impacts that uh, that someone could expect if they utilized erasure coding? Um, it would depend greatly on the implementation, I would say. Um, typically, you would see a considerable impact. That's why people don't use uh, high-performance workloads running on erasure coding. They would use it uh, for secondary data, typically, or HGD type of systems. Um, and we've developed something that's rather unique uh, in terms of uh, how little uh, overhead in terms of performance you or de performance degradation have with erasure coding. We haven't seen anything as uh, capable as our implementation. In this case, it's a uh, four to eight uh, uh, percent overheads or uh, latency increase uh, from a very low basis, but most systems would have much higher impact. So it, it greatly varies depending on the implementation of the technology. And maybe Adam, if you could explain why, you know, 
more people or organizations haven't been using erasure coding, you know, more widely in their block storage? Uh, typically, uh, block storage workloads, many of them are large virtualized environments, demanding apps, uh, databases, e-commerce, heavily loaded websites, anything that's um, uh, latency bound. They, you know, their users, they usually have multiple users of the systems. Uh, sometimes they have thousands or hundreds of thousands of users of uh, uh, the websites or the applications and databases. Uh, which uh, naturally drives for a focus on performance. And in this case, people are usually uh, doing the trade-off in terms of very good end-user um, experience with the system rather than space saving on, on the back end of the storage system. That's why most people would not use original coding because it's just a significant trade-off on ter in terms of uh, performance. Now, I know, you know, from talking with you uh, over the last few months, I know Storepool uniquely implements Erasure coding as part of its primary storage platform. Can you can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we were just launching that feature uh, live. Uh, it's now in, in general availability, and we've done something to have a um, like a, a case where it's uh, have your cake and eat it too. So we've implemented a very specific algorithm for. Uh, running erasure coding that protects uh, across uh, multiple servers or uh, entire racks if you have the scale. Uh, it would only rebuild the data, but it will be invisible in terms of performance impact on the system. So that's why it's have a cake and eat it too. You, you would not see, I mentioned, 4 to 8% degradation of the performance of the system. That could mean still 120 microseconds of latency and millions of IOPS with running erasure coding. So that's uh, we haven't seen any implementation on erasure coding that's able to do that. And the end result is customers now can have very efficient uh, storage systems, like uh, very dense and uh, you know a, a small data footprint, but also the performance that you would get from a uh, you know triple replicated system or eight you know uh, 1050 type of system, uh, but with all the benefits of uh, erasure coding that span uh, across. Uh, you know, multiple domains. For example, uh, with read, not only you have to rebuild, for example, an entire drive when uh, a RAID system fails, you also are rebuilding from one uh, from a, a few other drives in your hotspotting them. And since uh, drives that age together die together, when you start stressing uh, the, the drives that are coming uh, from the batch of a failed drive, you increase the risk of uh, failure, then the system is also much slower when it rebuilds because of the calculation of parity in traditional rate systems takes, takes a lot of time, thus large rebuild times, which also limits the efficiency of the uh, rate-based systems uh, because you can have, for example, 64 terabyte NVMe drives available. Nobody in their right mind would use them just because it takes so much time to rebuild them. So that then hits your CO2 emissions, right? Because you have a data center that's not very dense and all these things that a, a sophisticated erasure coding scheme can actually uh, improve in your business in general. This has been great information. I'll obviously put links to uh, to your news announcements uh, that you're making. Uh, but where can folks go if they want to learn more about some of the things we talked about today or Storepool in general? Uh, on Storepool in general, they can go to our website, uh, which is uh, storepool.com, S-T-O-R-P-O-L.com. Um, and then we will have news in, in uh, our uh, I think press release section about the latest release. Also on our uh, knowledge base, which is kb.storpo.com, they can find more technical information about it and how it's implemented and how they can uh, utilize that functionality if they're using Storpo. Well, Boyan, this was great. As usual, I enjoyed our conversation and learned a lot and uh, look forward to the next time that uh, you and I are able to catch up with one another. No, thanks for having me. All right. We'll take care.